uh, 3ds max okay so last class I think we did these right we did these little we did these crates So we fixed these crates last class. Um, today, let's see what we can make. It would be fun. We can do a little cloud. Maybe what I need to do now is I just want to maybe I set the stage and maybe we build out some of these just. Um, these environment pieces so we have something that everything's going to sit on right and then uh, maybe we create this little this little block dude look kind of cool I'd show you how to create all this stuff it looks super fun super fun detail uh, we can probably do that um, so Let's see, how should I go about this? And if you guys look at this, you guys can see that it's got this kind of like ice, uh, it's kind of, it's got this interesting perspective uh, kind of going on here where uh, you can see that, you know, um, it's, it's, it's turned a little bit and that's because that's, um, it's an advertising piece. So they, uh, they pull essentially this geo up and they're trying to they're kind of faking it out right like because how can it be simultaneously flat and have um a slope that goes up like that when this slope goes down so there's a lot of fakery that goes on in some of this stuff but if you guys pay attention to it you'll start to see uh, little things like that you know because, you know, it, even looking at these, like, these don't have shadows, so that, you know, they're kind of floating, um, and it looks like they're almost floating kind of behind the picture, and I think that what would have grounded them a little bit more is if they did have, like, maybe a shadow or something uh, that they were uh, causing on the ground, so there's little things like that that I would um, augment in the, the image itself before, um, before I, I called it kind of done right so is there no board out Let me turn on no board so you guys can see uh what my keyboard looks like I think I have to go here right. so uh let's let's tackle one of these guys so I mean the easiest way I would go about tackling this is um, you can do it with a number of it's a bunch of different ways to do it. Like you can start with let's start with a line, All right? We're just gonna use a line. I'm in my front view, All right? And then I'm just gonna draw like this, boop, and then like that. Draw this guy like that. Draw this guy like that and then draw this guy hold down shift if I hold down shift um, it straightens out that line for me and I can just boop like that and I don't really want to draw the outline of the shape um, I kind of just want to draw the line this way because I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use these polys and I'm gonna pull this geo uh, out of there All right because you see that it's got this kind of like uh, a soft grass Kind of thing up here and I think that could be done with uh, maybe cards or something or you know but I'll when I get there I'll I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see how I'm feeling about it right and yeah these are just kind of gonna be gonna be boxes so um, yeah we'll start with this most complicated one first and uh, let's see so with our line we're gonna enable render and viewport and then like that so right now our um, 
So I've, I've enabled it in, in the renderer and I've enabled it in the viewport. And what I want to do now is I want to change it from radial because it's going to take it from a pipe. It's going to take it into uh, like a shape like that, like a rectangle. It's going to give it uh, polygonal sides. So uh, this is Coolio. This is very Coolio. So now we can bring this guy to the side like so, as you can see. Uh, we've got uh, the basis of our shape. We've got the basis of our, our shape. So I might want to increase, uh, let's see, the width just a wee bit, just a wee bit, right? We want to increase it just a wee bit. And um, we're going to look at this and say, let's hit F4, right? This is our geo right now. This is our geometry. This is what our uh, our geometry looks like and this is fine right let me let me grab this guy bring it in a little bit like so I might want to give it a little extra just in case we're uh, we're gonna be uh, using a camera to shoot it or something and we want um, a little more run up or um, just a little tail at the end um, yeah this is fine and we're gonna add a edit mod edit poly edit edit poly modifier to our uh, to our line right here so yeah and as you notice you know we've made it this is I don't know if this is big enough let's actually let's increase this let's increase this length a little bit more because I imagine that it would be like a nice oh no oh no I had them um, I had the the line tool selected so yeah this feels a little better Right, and in the biz, right? Like you know how I tell you that you know I'm, I was telling you that this this guy is slanted, right? If this is how the artist drew it up, right? This is one of those industry secrets that I'm gonna show you guys that I'm telling you guys about. So this is how the artist showed it, draws it, right? Like what what would happen in in the advertising industry is that an artist, right? A two D artist would concept this out. They would draw all of this on maybe uh, Photoshop or on a piece of paper or something, however they drew the idea for this advertising, this marketing piece out, right? They would, you know, uh, draw this. Maybe they would use the aid of 3D. They would uh, maybe get somebody like me or the company like, uh, you know, uh, Nintendo would send them assets. They'd say, all right, we have this game. We have all these assets. They even might be game assets that they would send the, the, the guys. So... Uh, sometimes we've gotten game assets, so uh, we'll get whatever assets they have, whether it's marketing, whether it's scan data, whatever assets they might have for us. We'll we'll take all of that data in, and we the, we will then send it, give it to our concept guy, and the concept guy will draw up and mock up the idea, like the idea that he's having for uh, the marketing piece. So he's gonna draw up this idea right here. And what we're going to do in 3D is we're going to try to match that as close as possible without deviating uh, from as little as possible, kind of giving and taking from what the 3D is giving us. So if the, uh, if the concept art artist has the, uh, this approved in the sense that we're, we've got this, you know, uh, this slope right here, we have to represent that in 3D no matter what. Like we have we don't have a choice. We have to make it look as close to the uh concept art as possible. Like that is your job. You don't you don't deviate from the concept art if this is a marketing piece. If it's a piece that's going to be like a video game where you're playing, yes, your concept art is going to deviate from the game because well, it's got to be playable and people are going to look at it in like 360 degrees. But if this is advertising, you're not going to get that option. You're going to get, hey, this is my concept. I need you to nail that concept, right? So whatever you have to do. So like what, you know, what I would do is I'd get this piece. I'd, you know, maybe duplicate it over here, make it a copy, right? And we'll, let me show you what I'm talking about right here. So I would then in here go and actually, so I would go uh, throw on an edit poly modifier and I would actually select this edge right here and I would make it match that that slope that they have in there 
right? It's not realistic because if you look at it from here, right? Like you look at it from here, well, uh, that's not realistic because it's not a flat surface that our character could actually walk on. But it doesn't matter because all it's going to end up being is, you know, uh, an advertising piece. This might be the back of a video game. This might be the front uh, of a banner for Facebook or a marketing campaign that somebody's doing and they want it exact, right? So they don't care that it's not actually in 3D 100% right. What they care about is that it looks right. That's the most important thing, right? And that's one of those things that you guys are going to have to start, uh, uh, you know, uh, figuring out for yourselves whenever you're getting these jobs is, is my job to nail the concept or is my job to give you a, an accurate representation of it in 3D space, right? Those are two different jobs and you guys need to understand that. So these are little things that I'm trying to tell you guys. All right, sometimes, yo, they when they say nail the concept, they mean everything. So like the way that Mario's leg is right here, sometimes, in, you know, because of the rig or the model that you have, you might have to cut this leg off bend it and then just jam it back in there because it that that it looks right right like little things like that will literally will actually happen you might turn around like you might get this in 3d space and turn it right this way and mario legs is over here and one of his other leg over here but in the camera it looks right so it doesn't matter because when we render it i, I don't care about that right as, it, as long as it looks right to the camera, as long as I'm matching that perspective, as, I'm, as long as I'm matching whatever my concept artist has given me, oh, I'm good, right? So that's another thing that you guys are, are going to have to start, uh, start thinking about is am I matching the concept? Am I, you know, what, what am I doing in that situation? So uh, let's, let's hide this guy. Let's, let's hide this guy right here. We'll finish this guy off a little later, but... Let's ha hide that guy for a quick second. And uh, let's see. So now we want to create this piece right here. So to do that, we're just going to go into here. We're going to add an edit poly modifier to our, uh, our object here. And we're going to hit Alt and Y. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a swift loop right here. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, and if I scale this way, what it's going to do is it's going to straighten that line for me, right, just like that, and uh, like that. Now I can select these uh, polygon faces right here, select one, two, three, like that, hit F on the keyboard, so I can zoom into it, and now I'm just going to right click, and then I'm going to extrude it. like that oh and we've got the extrude going out there that's fine but I just want to match this guy right here so I've got that little nodule so now the same way if I hit R again and I go to my scale and I oh, 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 oh. scale it this way no so I just grab these guys and I should be able to Oh, okay, that's why. All right, so look at my scale tool. So right now it's selecting and squashing. I need to just get my regular scale tool. And now what it's going to do is it's going to straighten that guy for me. And I'm just going to pull this guy down. Control uh, 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 Y, like so. And then now I can just pull these guys forward till it matches that. I'm going to hit R again. And then just make sure that I'm scale when I scale it down. It makes this guy like a straight line, like just like that. All right. So we've got that like so. Um, right now, we could hit W, move this guy, and use this guy as that base. But I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is actually I'm gonna keep this guy on the straight and narrow like that. I'm going to hit Alt-Y again, and I'm going to draw this polygon where uh, this other part is. And as you guys can see, like, there's no way that that, you know, that's perspectively correct. So they're, they're doing a little finessing in this. I'll tell you guys that right now. 
All right, and that's what you guys have to look at and when it, whenever you're breaking this this stuff down is okay are they are they actually doing it or is it you know what, what's really going on so so yeah here I'm gonna stop here wherever you know this land meets and then I'm gonna hit plus again right here I'm just gonna grab this guy all the way down so then now all I need to do is grab this guy all right hit F on the keyboard and then I just need to extrude and then just extrude this guy all the way out like so and now we've got you know the blocking of this guy we've got the blocking of our stage all right and this guy's starting to really take shape this guy's really starting to take shape for us so uh one little piece at a time and we're gonna just you know we're gonna put this guy in I like I, I can't wait to make this guy because I like you know, I think I'd like how they they fit in there so uh, it's a really interesting scene and you know uh, once you start creating all the little characters and stuff it's still it's gonna start coming to life and um, you know uh, let's see so yeah so that's the let's block that out and then let's let's unhide all. So now, what I'm going to do is, so let's throw a turbo smooth just to see what it's doing to our uh, our model. So look at look at this guy. Let's turn it into Gumby. Uh, let's, see. let's go to the edit poly, and then let me see if I can just uh, clear use my smoothing groups. So. Is clear all the smoothing groups. And let's just do smooth 45. Not materials. Mm. No, maybe smooth 30 would do it. Auto smooth. So you fix that corner. Smooth, maybe twenty. See what I'm talking about. What I'm seeing is um, right here. You see this weird little area. Right turn off smooth materials. All right, but alas, uh, that's not going to work. We'll just use regular smoothing, and we'll just add some edge loops to it. Right. So um, what we can do is then, instead of uh, going through all the hullabaloo of uh, fishing all that up, I'm actually, let's see, unhide all. I'm going to grab this piece right here. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to drag up a little bit. I'm going to make it part of the element. I'm going to select the border of it. I'm just going to drag this guy down because I'm going to use this guy as um, our grass. And this guy is going to be our soft, soft grass right there at the top. All right, it's going to be our grass. All right. So I'm just blocking everything else. So I've blocked out the grass. I've blocked out the, the dirt. And yeah, we're good. So let's now... Let us now um, start smoothing. And yeah, so like you see that this, you know, this guy is straight on. Well, that's not how it is in the in the image. So, you know, we would have to just pull this guy up to match that, that silhouette. All right. All right, so one thing we can do now is now we can start adding our uh, our locking loops. So to do that, let's do let's select this guy. Hit the ring. So that's this guy right here. Just ring it. 
right click and then connect all right so now we want to connect two of these guys like so I'm all the way out not yeah like 91 and then do the same for these guys Just do ring connect and the beauty is I can now, because I have this stuff, I'm going to attach this guy to it, this top grass, just so I can work with it in here. And another thing I uh, like to do is if I'm not going to see the other side and if it's just, it's just going to be a render or something, I can go ahead and just delete the back stuff, right? And what that does is it makes it so I don't need um, edges to kind of harden that that side of it and if we're not gonna see this side either right I can delete this I can actually delete these guys all right so I'm just gonna select this guy hold down shift nope I'm just gonna select this guy this guy this guy this guy actually let's do select by angle So that guy, move that guy, move this guy, and we'll see what you, you guys will get. Okay. So what it does is, is it hardens those edges because there's an open face in there. So that's all I'm doing is just removing those. Right, so now let's continue adding our edge loops to these guys. So I'm just gonna select this guy right here. Connect. Let's fine. Just go like this, like this, like this. Right click, connect. And as you guys can see, I'm just gonna put those edge loops right there. Right. I need some right here as well. So, right, just keep on keeping on. Right click, connect to those. It's going to harden those edges. And I think I need some right here. So ring, connect, What I like to do is I want to make all of these flush, like this side stuff right here. So I'm just gonna hit F on the keyboard. No, not those guys. Let's hit F F3. I can just select these guys and just make them flush. screen okay this is a start for it and then um, let's create this guy right here and these guys are just boxes so
instead of doing all that nonsense, just just uh, just use what we have. It's gonna go here. Just like this. Actually, no. Oh, it's gonna be stuck in my. I just need one poly polygonal face. This is mostly how I work anyway. So let's go element. This, this, because I want the full width of this, so I know that it's going to match. So I'm just going to hold down shift, shift, drag it right there. Uh, element, yes. And yes, Z. Hit one on the keyboard, and then it's going to bring me up to the vertices. That's at the bottom, and then I can just select this out of order, shift, drag, and then cap it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these guys off. Control backspace so I can create my own. All right, that easy. I didn't have to do anything else. I might just duplicate this guy like so on the top in the element all right i don't need to go all the time and create new standard primitives and stuff like that all the damn time i can just use what i get all right okay so now Like this guy, like so. Hit F on the keyboard, right click, connect. Ring, right click, connect. Um, once again, I'm gonna, you know, just before I make this final one, I'm gonna get my modeling material here just so I can get an idea of what we're getting out of this. Okay, actually, let me wait and then I'll finish so I can make a copy of it. So let's go, let's finish this last one up. So, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna create these guys like so. And then select that whole thing and then just shift drag. Okay, so now this is uh, another part of uh, another part of it right there. And then I'm just gonna make it an element like so. All right. So we're still gonna have to make that perspective uh, that perspective. Because there's just so many perspectives working in this. All right, like they, there's not one, it's, you can't do it with one camera. So you're gonna have to fake some stuff, right? Like that's the idea behind it is, you know, in one camera, it's only gonna give us so much depth that, you know, we're gonna be forced to force some of it ourselves and it's gonna make it look a little more correct. Okay, so. Keyboard. I'm gonna go to our guy right here. We're gonna hit one, hit F4, just so you guys can see what's going on under the wireframe, under the under the hood, so to speak. So I'm gonna hit um, actually right clicks. Okay, connect these guys. No, I'll give it two like that. Bring this guy like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this guy a little off screen and then use this guy as my, uh, my transfer. And I do the same for this guy like so. 
So now it's gonna it's gonna bend right there. I'm gonna hit Alt. Y right here. No. Oh yeah. Let's do that. Two. So two on the keyboard and then Alt Y. Oh yeah, it's only gonna do one at a time because those are separate. So I'm just gonna have to select these guys, right click, and then connect. Like so. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys another little trick. So right now, if I move this, you see how it's messing with um, my geometry flow. I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys this before, but if I wanted to, I could constrain it to this edge, to the edge of it. So now it's only gonna move along that edge and it's not gonna affect the normal uh, of, the, uh, of the transition, so. Now when we get something like that, we get a nice little transition, and we're good. And we know that everything is, um, everything looks right. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just shift drag this guy over. I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna right click this guy, and I'm gonna convert this guy. Nope, not with the turbo smooth on top. I'm gonna cut the turbo smooth for a second. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna convert it to an editable poly, because I don't wanna collapse that turbo smooth on it, because I wanna, I still want to make some changes to this guy uh, as we go along. Uh, that will be a little harder too if I add um, turbo smooth on it. So um, the lower the form is, the easier it's going to be to to kind of do what you're trying to do. So this is going to be the dirt, and then if I hit control, well if I hit control I here. I should be able to select the inverse, which is this other guy. And then I can just assign uh, some kind of grass green material that I have on here. So I'm going to use a lighter one. And then now I can just throw my turbo smooth back on top. Just so I can see uh, a representation of what's going on. All right, so you guys can see now the difference between if I just kept it normal versus if I tried to match the profile of the actual concept, right? You can see the difference, right? In reality, this is what it, in phys if you looked in a camera, this is what it would look like in reality. But in 3D, well, you know, you might need to make some changes to make it look a little uh, right for for the concept. So, um, you know, you might need to push a little, a few things to, to really get that, to get that look you're looking for. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. my make planer all right so another little thing I wanted to show you guys so like you know I've got this slant right here but I want to make it planer so what I can do is, is just make planer um, button right here that I can use to make sure that it's just gonna be flat right and I don't have to kind of guess I could have gone in and I could have done my you know, but, or I could just go in here and then find the, the axis that it's on that I need to make planar on, and I can just make that axis planar. So F4. And I can do that to this guy as well. Actually, all I need to do is for this guy just.
guy's a stray. Alright. Alright. So our environment is starting to shape up a little bit. Slowly but surely we're getting uh we're getting some results here. I was mad. I was like, man, how close is this? Oh, well, it's like eating this thing, so. Yeah, it's actually that close, so. I need to just pull it down a little bit. This is when I would start, you know, kind of making sure everything's going in place. And I'm not gonna create all this, you know, this is just this guy duplicated and then stretched out. So I would, I wait till the end to add any unnecessary geo because this would be like a five minute operation to take this to this. I'm just moving this out, yeah, so. So all the extra little things like, you know, I just, uh, you know, even this little, these little brick piles, you know, all this stuff, I'm waiting till the end because I don't wanna, overpopulate the, the scene yet you know I'm trying to take it slowly so that my computer runs at optimum speed and making all the all the little stuff first I'm not gonna make all the duplicates of them I'll just make one of it and then at the end we'll put everything you know together we'll put the scene back together see what we have and see how far we got you know through the entire class uh, you know I think that'd be really cool to see uh, the progression from you know starting this guy to working through all of the the assets that it, it you know that it requires to make it and you guys will have a framework for this that you guys can always go back to so win 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 all right so um we've got these guys looking all right all right ish um you know the thing is the texture is really what's going to take it to the next level for this guy because it's got these little these little leaves let's go to perspective on it i think it's going crazy it's got these little leaves and stuff like this and um i mean we can do that but it's going to take a lot of geo and uh, I think a card would do the same exact thing. An alpha, like an alpha channel with that texture on it would do the exact same thing. And we wouldn't need to cut out um, anything, you know? Because there's a lot, of, a lot of intricacy there. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, but that's not how I would go. So um, let's see. Another thing I want to do now is I kind of want to increase this guy a little bit. Because it kind of, you know, these guys kind of fall over the edge. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm, I think I'm going to take out um, I think I'm going to take out this bottom piece bring out this top piece a little bit because what this, this bottom piece is doing is it's causing it to um, let me turn on the turbo smooth see it's causing it to round it out when it needs to just kind of fall to the side right so to do that i'm just going to go back into our edit poly modifier let me save this just because you know i haven't saved and my computer's notorious for being sir crashes a lot so uh let's let's mitigate some of that by doing the old save button 
Control S will do the same thing. All right. Uh, so it's because I haven't selected my selecting my two, selecting my two. Okay. I'm gonna select by like that, and then I'm just gonna hit F on the keyboard, and then just Alt deselect the ones that I don't want. leaving the ones that I want to delete. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, boom, like so. And as you can see, like, you know, this guy kind of lands flush with this guy and it looks almost like it's got like a, like a curvy thing at the end of it, like. Maybe a, like a, like an inset. this and then hit one no, actually I think that looks cool I think it's kind of like that and then this guy so like this guy then comes a little further down actually what I want to do is I'm gonna do this I'm gonna hold down shift I'm gonna draw, shift, drag. Or I'm gonna pull this guy out like so. I'm gonna select this inner guy. I'm gonna actually kind of puff him out a little bit, just so he gives it a little bit of life, right? Like some of that life, love, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that we all want. The American dream. That's what this guy wants. This guy just wants the American dream, guys. You guys give this little shrubbery guy the American dream. Alright? She wants to live a happy little life. So yeah, we've got this weird little uh, this little thing inside of it and um, we can just take care of that by uh, just closing this guy up a little bit more. So, I can pull this guy down like so. All right. So now this guy should have like a, a nice kind of bend to it. This guy should be a little more flush. But I think, you know, we might need to add a shell to it or something to give it a nice little bubble. All right, so you, you guys can see what I'm talking about, right? Like where it's now like, it's rounder, it's smoother, it's got that, uh, that iconic shape of the grass. All right, and that's what we want to achieve with this guy. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make this guy flush. Flush, flush, flush. So, um, let's, make, let's go back into our edit poly, bring this guy in like so. All right, and then let me just bring this guy like so. And then just bring this guy, make sure it, make sure it covers up. Just like that. And this guy, you know, you guys can see that this guy, it's got a nice rounded kind of kind of feel to it. So we're going to move to this guy next and uh, try to address some of the things that I'm seeing that I don't like. It's like this guy's, it's almost okay, but no. We need it to be more rounded and more protrudy. That's a technical term, by the way. Protrudy. Could also be a name. I don't know. 
Right, so let's hit F, and then if we hit Alt X, we can see where our grass is in comparison to our actual other grass. So now let's just hit one on the key. No, actually, we hit two. F four. Select this guy. Ring it. Connect it. All right, and then I'm gonna use this guy. Just gonna bring this guy out like so. And select these guys. Deselect that guys. Deselect those guys. I'll bring this guy down a little bit more, just so it encompasses that. Go back and select this middle guy. Bring it down a little bit more. So then now when I turn on my Turbo Smooth, right, I'm getting that iconic those shape. I'm bringing their shape, that shape language, I'm bringing it back to mine. All right, I'm bringing it back to mine. And there's, mine is still too sharp. Like you can see like, theirs has no sharp transition right here. So I need to go in and fix that. Right, prontismo, another technical term. So to do that, I'm just gonna grab these two edge loops that we added. I'm gonna control and backspace them to remove them so that instead of getting that hard transition, we're getting a nice soft transition, right? And what that's done is it's also affected the way the the end of the shape is so we might need to go ahead and um, add an edge loop right there so I think the one already exists if I'm, if I'm uh, correct in my posturing so what I can do is control backspace Alt Y I'm gonna inc insert a swift loop right there so that it acts like a like a stop, so you can say. All right. What I'm gonna do is now, in my edit poly, select this guy, because I know this guy needs to be out a little bit further. So I'm just gonna select this middle guy again. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, Scale Arachi, scale it out a little bit so we get in that, that nice round transition. All right. Watch this. All right, so we're getting that transition we want. I just need to get this shape so I might want to actually hmm. let me see this first so so maybe if I chamfer it all right I think that would work right there like that that should give me what I need right wrong Okay, and then maybe if I hit ring, no, I'm just gonna select the whole thing. Control select like that. Hit Alt, remove that. Like so. There goes something. Okay, so now we're getting that same, that same rounded kind of shape. All right, all right. You guys are probably like, man, he focuses on the most minimal, random things. Yeah, this is your job, focusing on the little things that you don't think people notice, but they actually do. But they actually do. Your clients will definitely notice. They're gonna be like, well, why is that not rounded all the way? Why is that? Why is that, you know, you need to add more roundness to that. Da -da -da, little, thing, little things like that, trust me, my friends, will, will come up. All right.
right, so uh, yep. So now let's uh, let's go and let's do some some more fun stuff to these guys because these guys, you know, as you guys can now see, we've got too many edge loops, and these edge loops are causing us quite some pain. Control backspace. Like so, remove those. Okay. Instead of that, I'm gonna actually select the center one, ring it, right click, connect, nope, connect options. Yes. And then convert this to one of those. Hit F on the keyboard. Deselect the bottom ones. Grab these top ones. And I'm just going to make this kind of like a nice, softer uh, transition. That's what I want. And I think this guy still has a bottom. So I might want to delete that as well. this now I've only got the bottom delete so now I can hit alt and Y again right here for the side and you know like usual I just want to select this guy and then just scale this guy out a little bit just so we give it a little nice little no PZ So, and then just scale it on a little bit like that. And now, just have something like that. Nice and soft. Hmm. Bring a little more life, a little more character. It's not just what the computer is giving us. All right. So one last little building piece and that's it. And that is it for the class. So let's see. So same thing here. We just got to get rid of these guys. And another way to get rid of these guys. Ooh, now I just remembered. All right. So I want to get rid of these, uh, those two right there. I can ring it. And then if I hit right click and I collapse, it's going to collapse them to the middle. So now I don't have to recreate that. I can just select that middle one again now. Right. And then hit F on the keyboard, control select my verts, hit F3 on the keyboard and then deselect the bottom ones so all I have are the top ones. All right? And now I can just make it a little more soft, a little plumper, a little better, better tilled land. It looks a lot more inviting. And then I want to select the bottom piece again as well for this guy. So I'm going to select this guy, hit F on the keyboard, Control select polygon so that it takes me to the polygon mode. Alt now deselect everything else that I do not want. Everything I don't want, I select I want you. The rest of you, I don't want you. I'm like Uncle Sam. I want you, but I don't want you. All right. So uh, now let us select our side let's hit f4 to see now let's ring right click and then connect and then just check and then the same same thing i want to do just want to give it a little bit of like you know just a little plumpness a little a little more round to make it feel like you know i see you I see you little uh, 
Little hillside, doing your thing. Give a little love every now and then. All right. So now, we should have something that looks like this. A soft rolling hill. Something inviting. And I think we still have the bottom. I'm almost certain we still have the bottom of this guy. So we might want to delete that and call it a, a dizzy. Oh no, the bottom's gone. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we did it all. All right, so now we can pull our uh, our environment. Let's call this ground. Let's pull this back into our scene. All right. So now, let's uh, save this guy. Let's do F on the keyboard. Now let's select everything we have and just hit Alt Q. Selection. So here's where we are. Okay, so here's a thing that's happening that I just saw. So for some reason, this guy here. This guy back up. There we go. All right, that's better. So move this guy up a little bit. So, so that it matches that guy right there. All right. Better. Feels better. Okay. Oh, skills guy up a little bit. Select this bottom piece. Let's it down a little bit. So Alt X. All right. Same here. Select this guy. And then just pull it down. All right, so here's where we are. Moving along. Does anybody have any questions? 